Well, it was a very, very difficult decision. I think that um, I was, if I was making this decision with my heart, then I'd be, I'd be at Celtic for life because it's an incredible club, club I supported all my life. Um, but it all happened very quickly. I, I was presented an opportunity that um, that came to me, uh, and and ov obviously, of course, then emotionally, you have to take that out. And my decision was that I felt that after nearly three years at Celtic, uh, with everything that we'd achieved and the success that we'd had on the pitch and the improvements we made off the pitch, uh, that I felt it was probably then the time to move on to to my next challenge. And and I've had opportunities to leave in, in over nearly three years at Celtic, but this was an opportunity that I felt was too good to turn down, you know, to come to a club uh, with the ambition that, that Leicester City have, uh, with a very simple infrastructure that allows me to, to work well with the... Uh, uh, with the chairman and, and John here as the, the sporting director. Uh, and um, and like I say, a group of players that are young and that are hungry. And of course, that have needed stabilising because obviously the emotions here on and off the pitch has been, you know, it's been incredible, the journey to win the league and then the, the real tragic events of uh, earlier on. So, uh, so I felt I could come in and, and help. And also, you know, we're moving... You know, in just over a year's time, to uh, one of the best training grounds in the world. So, uh, so all of that in the mix. Like I said, it wasn't easy at all, and I've got family and everyone that are still uh, deeply upset. However, I have to remove that emotion in, in my career as a as a football manager, and and then, like I say, I'm I'm very happy that I made the move. I think that my family have grown up Celtic supporters, and and many friends, and and not only that, there, of course, there's real sadness because. In, in my time in Scotland, I've made a whole host of friends, you know, in the football club itself. You know, uh, the players were amazing for me there every single day. You know, they, they really enthused me to come in and work with them. Absolutely incredible bunch, and they'll continue to, to have the success. Uh, all the staff there at the club right the way through were amazing for me and gave me ever, every chance. The supporters were from the first day I walked into Celtic, they were they were incredible, humming away and and give us the support. And like like I say, you know my the my my family have supported you know Celtic all their lives. So, uh, but I have to remove all of that emotion and and think right, okay, if my journey has finished at Celtic and I've achieved probably what I think maybe is all I can, then I have to uh, look there and and look elsewhere. And that's that's what I did, Celtic is a huge club in every single way in terms of its history. It's the first club that has won the uh, the, the European Cup, British team. It gets 60-odd thousand every other week. Um, there's an intensity and a, and a demand and a, an expectation to play it at Celtic, which is n not matched by many teams in the world. So it's not the case of whether it's a bigger... For me, it was about the challenge and coming to the Premier League uh, back into that where I've experienced it with Swansea and Liverpool. Um, the challenge of coming in and working against top players and against top coaches. Uh, and like I say, with a club that with that ambition to to move forward and, and keep progressing, and that was ultimately what, uh, as I said, what, uh, what was the real draw. I, I've obviously seen some of what's been said and, and read, but um, listen, Celtic supporters will hurt. You know, I, I will understand how they feel. Um, they're hurting. They're maybe a little bit worried uh, in terms of what what would maybe happen with, with me leaving. But what also gave me the comfort to make the move was also knowing that what we'd put in place there in the nearly three years was going to stabilise the club moving forward. You know, we get a brilliant, they get brilliant staff there in terms of John Kennedy, who was my first team coach. Uh, John understands now... Uh, the success that we've had so he then steps up becomes the assistant manager so he knows the fabric and of the club and he also knows how uh, how I've worked and how we've been able to bring success uh, Stevie Woods the goalkeeping coach there as well all guys that are as I said have been a part of that success Scott Brown is the captain you know an incredible leader you know and in, in with the team on and off the pitch so 
as hard as it was to make the decision, I knew that coming away, like I say, the improvements that we made would hopefully allow that success to continue. And like I say, we left the club in a really good position. You know, we eight points clear, haven't won a trophy already. And uh, like I said, in the quarter final of a uh, of a competition, I think what Leicester achieved, you know, back a few years ago was an incredible story. You know, I think we've, it's all recognised as the, uh, as I said, one of the most incredible sporting stories in the history of uh, football. So, um, so like I say, that will always be difficult to repeat. Um, however, I think after a, a couple of years, like you say, of that uh, instability and, and sitting mid-table. I think our objective is to move. And for me to come here at this stage of the season was to come in and assess where the squad is at um, over these last remaining games and uh, and then see where we can look to improve. And I don't want to put any pressure on, on the players because we want to perform. I don't want to trap them with, yet yeah, we want to finish seventh or sixth or whatever. We just have to do our very best. And, uh, and for the remainder of the season, we'll look to do that. And then, uh, and then obviously we have a window in the summer to look to improve the, the squad again. But the, the last couple of days have been brilliant working with the, the players, you know, getting a sense of, of where they're at. Um, they've been very, very good, real good quality, real good intensity in their work. And there's areas that we have to improve, there's no doubt, in, in our game model. But that's, that's something that will come in time. You know, coming to here, the, it's such an exciting group of players. I think you can see the likes of young Harvey Barnes and Ben, like you say, James, uh, young Nandidi. And so, so there's a whole raft of, of very, very talented young players here that we can improve and develop. But what's also important is the experience around that. You know, you get the likes of Johnny Evans, who's a top-class defender. Big experience, you know. Wes Morgan, who's been a wonderful skipper for the uh, for the club, and still has a very very important role to play. Um, so the squad has has real potential in it, and and it's my job to try and maximise that. Have you been told you've got money to spend in the summer? I haven't even spoken about it, to be honest. My job is to come in, but there's no doubt we we will look to improve uh, the squad. Uh, but there's no figure or no number. But um, but the ambition of the the club. Uh, they want to continue to improve, and each year you have to, so I'm sure we'll spend some. I think when I see the, the game and I've analysed a number of the games and then been here the other night, um, we certainly need to more coordinate it in our game, so everything is synchronised. Firstly, we need to defend with a bigger pressure in the game, and, and I've seen that in the, in the last few days, that the players are very willing and, 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 and they want to do that. So how my team plays is they're normally very structured, and uh, with, with improvisation at the top end of the field. So we need to get that structure in place that's going to allow them to really be aggressive when they defend. And then from that, then we have to play with a, with a faster tempo and speed in our game. So, uh, but all of that will come. It's training, it's work, it's, uh, it's, it's what you do on the training field. And it's, it's what I love to do. And, uh, and like I say, the players have responded very well. I need to make an impact now. That's my. That's what I feel I want to be able to do. You know, of course, I'm observing and watching and and looking at different aspects of the team on and off the pitch and how we can be better. But um, but I believe between now and the end of the season, we want to finish at the highest possible position that we can. It's going to take a little bit of time, of course, to 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 put in place methods. Um, you know, especially when you're looking to put structure in place. But it gives me a chance to do that between now and the end of the season. And, and like I say, people say talking about freedom. My teams are very structured. So they need structure, they need coordinating. Uh, and that's something that you do on the training field and, and off the field. So, But the response has been brilliant. So far, we've got real top quality players uh, who I believe will um, will get better and better. And a nice chat with Harry Maguire today. And um, I've spoken to a number of the players. So, um, but I'll eventually do that. But it's, you know, the communication is important. I think that, uh, especially with young players, they need to understand where they're at. And I'm always clear with, with players where they stand and, uh, and the areas that they need to improve on. And there's no doubt, we, we, you know, there's a big improvement in this group. You know, there's huge potential there, but we can get better. And that's something that we'll look to do. They're a very good side, you know, good players with good physicality. And also, I know Vickery's Road. Uh, as a manager, because it uh, was my first job, and and it was it was always difficult for any team to go to Vicarage Road. 
so um, so we'll expect a tough game. But I'm really looking forward to it. You know, as I said, the players have, have responded very, very well. Uh, they've had a, a nice win during the week, which always breeds confidence. Training has been good. We'll make our final preparation tomorrow. And then, like I say, it uh, be a really good game. All Kuntop gave me was support. I think he's very, I think he's keen, like like all the supporters, you know, to see his team do their very best, you know, to see good football, but importantly to win. You know, we're, we're here to win, that's that's key. But he likes his teams to, to play in a certain style. And, um, and like I say, he's been absolutely brilliant. You know, you think of the, the, the trauma and, and all of the emotion that uh, has surrounded him. I've been absolutely astonished by uh, his own stability. Uh, and that was also very, very important for me coming because I felt that I could help him on his journey and where he wants to take Leicester to. So uh, for the first time in his life, he's without his father. He's made decisions without his father. And uh, he's been so courageous and brave throughout the whole process. And that really uh, that really was clear to see. So, uh, so he's given me all the support I'll ever need. You know, want me to help create the club along with himself and, and John. Uh, and we'll work very closely to give the Leicester supporters a team they can be proud of. And uh, and like I say, you know, improve the players. You know, you always want to impose that sort of football philosophy, but share with them the, the ideas and talk about culture and environment. You know, because that's important. It's 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 very important if you if you're having uh, especially young players, but but any players, players that want to improve, you know, they have to improve within the the environment. So it was just outlining a couple of key points along that route, and then obviously what my expectations are, and of course what my commitment is to them, and uh, and at least they start from day one. I think what all we can do is do do the work at the club that hopefully will convince the players to stay. There's always going to be other possibilities for um, for players at some point, but we deal with that when it comes. I think what's important is that we create an environment where the players want to be there, they want to stay, and whatever else happens after that, then uh, we, we will just have to deal with it. Well, and finally, just on the game, is there any injury news? Is there anyone that's got bumps and bruises other than, I know you've not been here too long, but other than Daniel Marty, who I know is a a relatively long-term injury. Is there anyone you're struggling with? And Mark Albrighton, I know, is uh, an injury down. Yeah, no, apart from those those two boys, everyone everyone else should be available for the weekend. We've obviously got another day to, to go. But, um, but no, the, the players have trained very well. And and like I say, the, uh, we've got one more day, one more session to go, and uh, hopefully they'll be fit and available. You know, we were very focused. You see how we were when we came back from, uh, uh, from our midwinter break. You know, the team very focused, playing very well, winning. Um, this is just that this was a, an opportunity that that, that arose and um, very quickly. And I had a decision that I had to make very quickly. And, and obviously removing the emotion from that was something that w was key. Um, and I believe that this opportunity to, to come to a club like Leicester, it wasn't going to wait for me. You know, so uh, so then I have a decision to make, and uh, and however hard that was, and however difficult it is, and I like I said, I I respect that people will hurt, um, but hopefully in time, um, you know, the measure of my success there hopefully will be what we did on the field, and like I say, the improvements, Chris, that uh, we made off the pitch, to ensure that long term success of the club. I think the club, in fairness, had had to make a decision um, in terms of where they were at, and of course the the intention was to bring in someone in, someone permanent. I think when they spoke with Celtic, they made it clear that I was their their only choice, um, which then means that I then have a decision to make. So um, yeah, so so that's it, it wouldn't await it, Chris. The Premier League for when I was in it. It gets quicker every every season. I think the tactical developments of the game is is something that excites me. I've always been a you know been a coach since I've been twenty twenty one years of age. So th all the innovations that are coming through and how I've always liked to see the game, the challenges are are there now in, in the Premier League. The quality of the players improves, um, and 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 obviously 
I've always been and always will be a student of the game, so I always feel I'm learning. And and for me, uh, Celtic has been wonderful for me in many ways, not just the winning of the trophies, but also you you learn uh, and improve yourself. So um, so there's no doubt that, uh, that that both will hopefully have improved. And uh, and like I say, hopefully I can come in and. Uh, and show that with with Leicester. I think what's very important at this stage, with all like I said, all the emotions that have gone around the the club this season, I think to provide that emotional stability with the players, to lead them, uh, and also lead the club in terms and of a vision in terms of how we we want to work. So it's clear right the way through the club, you know, from the staff here that work at the stadium, you know, to the the, the training ground, uh, that there's one clear path that we're all following and then eventually to define a, a way of working and a style of football that has a clear identity it's what I've done in, in all my teams that I've played with you know whether people believe in it or not whether it's the right way or wrong way it's the way I've always worked Dion so um, so I'm hoping that that's what I'll bring to to here and uh, and then like I say we uh, we hopefully can then have success with that well, I think you can have, you know, every club can have a clear vision, you know, and then and then with the with a football manager, and uh, and with John Rodkin here, our director of football, we then provide the strategy then going forward, and and obviously uh, can top the you know the the owner, you know, we're very clear on how we want to work, you know, I think as a manager, you you never believe that you're going to be here. Uh, for six months or one year, and 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 like what I did at Celtic, you you're building to 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 try and put something in place, and I think that's the true measure of your success, which is the legacy. So, but I've I've come here, not to be here just for for a season. I hope to work to continue uh, to to take the club forward. There's there's a wonderful opportunity to do that here, and I think everyone's aligned with that uh, with that vision and. Uh, and it's something that I'm excited about.